Okay. Thank you for joining us for this video. Um, we are going to give you an overview of the K-3 Reading Corps program. My name is Jolene Gardy and I'm the Director of Student Services at the Southeast Education Cooperative, uh, one of the seven regional education associations in North Dakota. And I'm joined here by my colleague. I'm Dana Sell, so I am the Re Reading and Math Corps Program Coordinator, uh, also at the Southeast Education Cooperative. So you can see on this slide, um, K-3 Reading Corps is administered through the Southeast Education Cooperative as well as the Central Region Education Association. And you can see um, our staff, including our uh, master literacy coaches, as well as our program staff. Um, Reading Corps actually has uh, multiple programs. We have a pre-K program, um, but today we're gonna focus on our K-3 program. This is just an overview of the logic model explaining what the program does um, and how we work with students. And the thing to understand as we take you through what the program is, is to understand that it has proven results. It really does work. Um, Reading Corps was started in Minnesota and is now replicated in 13 other states, including North Dakota. And um, as part of that, it has been the subject of several large randomized controlled trials comparing students who have received Reading Corps to those who have not. Um, in North Dakota, we completed a match comparison analysis study with West Fargo Public Schools, where we took 99 students who received Reading Corps and 99 students with similar demographics, similar starting scores, um, who received support for um, 20 weeks. And we found that our second and third graders especially closed that gap and had 18 additional weeks uh, equivalent of reading instruction. For our kindergartners and our first graders, you can see on the second chart, their results were still statistically significant, um, but was not quite as, as big of a um, outcome as you can see with our, our second and third grade students. So Reading Core works with tier two students who are kindergarten through third grade. Um, they're typically 49th percentile down. We don't have a bottom, so we could uh, serve students who go much lower to match up with whatever title, reading recovery type of services you might have. Um, a site can pri prioritize which grades um, of students that they work with. So you can serve students in all four grades. You can target towards early grades. Um, towards those second and third graders, as long as a student is eligible, meaning that they're in tier two. Um, you can make some choices as a site if you want to serve students who are closer to um, the top of that range or who are further down and further behind. Um, each of our tutors has a caseload of between eight and 15 students, depending on um, what their hour commitment is at the school each day. And we'll go through that a little bit. So in our Reading core model, the REAs uh, partner with school districts to um, provide tutoring service during the school day, during school hours. It's one-on-one, -on -one, 20 minutes a day, five days a week. We benchmark students three times a year using FastBridge assessments, and we do provide that resource as well as training for our tutors to, to do that assessment. And by looking at the data, our coaches work to determine which skills students need work on. And we have interventions that are scripted that target those uh, deficit areas. We have a custom data system uh, that allows us to track student growth uh, through one minute progress monitoring probes each week. So we have really consistent data to take a look and decide if um, we need to change interventions or continue on through that progress. When a student meets their grade level target for either the fall, winter, or spring, they're eligible to exit from the program and then we bring a new student on um, in their place. So here's a little bit more about our, our program model. The reason that Reading Core is so successful um, is because we do have a database decision-making model um, our literacy interventions are evidence-based, and then there's a high emphasis on fidelity. Um, and the reason that that's so important is because our tutors uh, come from the community. Some may have uh, experience in education, others may not. Uh, they're essentially committing to a year of service through AmeriCorps, and by having uh, a strong focus on fidelity, 
we're able to make sure that the, in, the interventions are implemented as they're designed. And to support that, um, we have two layers of coaching that helps with fidelity. The first is an internal coach, and that's someone who works for your school, who's there as a day-to-day -day site supervisor and support for the tutor, as well as uh, an REA master coach who visits once a month, uh, looks at fidelity data, and is there to really support your school and the tutor and internal coach uh, through all of those literacy pieces. So we'll share a little bit more about the tutors. Yeah, so as Jolene mentioned, the tutors are individuals who are not current school employees. Uh, they are from the community. Typically the demographics that work well for the position, we see a lot of retirees, stay-at-home parents, or college students um, that it works well for their schedule to, to serve in these roles. Uh, so the first step is that the tutor or the applicant needs to apply for the position. Uh, and then once accepted, those tutors um, provide those 20 minute sessions with each student for that caseload of 18 50 to 15 students, depending on their hours commitment. So they are responsible for assessing the students reviewing the data, delivering those tutoring interventions, uh, and then have time incorporated into their schedule to receive that coaching and observations from the internal and master coach as well. Uh, so the, the program runs then through the school year. So we enroll tutors at the end of August, and then they stay through um, at least the first week of May, and the term ends at the end of May for the school year uh, for them to be able to complete their hours commitment. So since it is those AmeriCorps positions, the, the two hours positions that we have are a 900 hour slot or a 675 hour slot. For the 900 hour slot, that equates to about 28 hours a week or five and a half hours a day for their tutor schedule. For the 675 hour slot, that equates to about 20 hours a week or four hours a day for their tutor schedule. Um, and so once we set up, you know, that consistent schedule for them, that, um, you know, four or five and a half hour block, um, Monday through Friday, um, they get started um, with training in August. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that, that training. Um, as for the role, the financial benefits for the 900 hour position, they receive a living allowance pre-tax of $1,100 once per month, or for the 675 hour position, $820 once per month. So there is that difference between the hourly wage um, where it's not typical employment, it, it's just that monthly living allowance for their service. Uh, additional AmeriCorps benefits are that tutors are eligible to receive an education award to pay for current college tuition or student loans that they may have. Uh, individuals who are 55 or older on their first day of service uh, can also pass that education award on to a child or grandchild for those same educational purposes. Uh, additionally, while they serve during that, that year, um, the tutor also receives forbearance and interest accrual reimbursement on any student loans that they may have. Um, for, for our college students who serve, this has also been a big, um, a big benefit in just their professional development and, and networking for them as they develop that relationship with teachers and with the, with the schools as well. So uh, we work with you, your school, to help recruit that tutor. Um, in some of our larger communities, we recruit through um, university system, newspaper on your school, um, career um, employment site, um, as well as in our smaller rural schools, really thinking about who do we know in the community that might be interested in a part-time position just through the school year um, that aligns with um, sort of a school schedule. So maybe a stay-at-home parent whose youngest is in school now and they're not ready to commit to full-time employment. They'd like to have the same school days off as well as a grandparent, um, as we said, college students as well. So we really work with you, provide you the information um, to share with staff and in your community to try to, to place that tutor. But then we go through the process um, together of hiring them um, and complete all the paperwork and onboarding as well as doing that, um, that payment piece as well. 
Hey, the internal coach is the other big uh, commitment for schools to have the program. So this is an existing employee of your school or district um, that hopefully has a little background in either literacy instruction, instruction, assessment, intervention, or coaching. Um, so typically an instructional coach, a literacy coach, a reading specialist are sort of the main um, staff who might take this role. We expect it would be about six to nine hours per month per tutor to um, for this internal coach role. So really thinking about who is that person that um, maybe is already looking at data, making decisions on interventions that could help support this role. Um, as part of their responsibilities, they would be that on-site support um, for the tutor, help do orientation, show the tutor where things are at at the school, how to use the copier, um, once we assess students and set a schedule, working with teachers um, to set the tutoring schedule. So what time are uh, students available to be pulled for intervention um, and selecting students based on that. Um, they help ensure the fidelity of the reading core model by doing two observations each month with a fidelity checklist. So they do have to have um, at least a couple of 20 minute spots where they can um, come in and watch the tutor uh, doing their, their tutoring and, and use that fidelity checklist. Um, in that, for that reason, sometimes reading specialists aren't the best people because they might have their own caseload of students the entire day and we don't want them to miss those students. So we can work with you to try to figure out who might be the best um, person for that role. It's definitely not a classroom teacher, um, but we can kind of talk through what might make a lot of sense. That person doesn't receive any compensation through Reading Corps. In some districts, it just becomes part of the instructional coach's position. In other districts, they might add a stipend. So it varies kind of case by case. Um, and we'd be happy to talk through uh, what that might look like and who might be a good fit for you for that internal coach role. In terms of what um, we as REAs provide, um, as we mentioned, that coaching specialist or master coach role um, who's a content uh, expert in literacy. They're going to come and visit you and do a once per month site visit uh, to watch uh, tutors using a fidelity checklist as well, make sure that everything is being implemented as designed. They'll sit down and look at um, student graphs and data for all of our active students and um, help make decisions if students are getting ready to exit, if we need to change interventions, just ensuring that students are making the progress that we would anticipate. And then just overall support and answering questions for the internal coach and the, the tutor to ensure that they feel comfortable and have a good understanding of, of the role and of the material. Um, and then as we mentioned in Dana's role, um, helping to do that program administration um, and support to the site, that's everything from tutor recruitment, onboarding paperwork, um, helping to coordinate the training for both the tutor and the internal coaches, as well as overall program uh, coordination. So in looking at the professional development overview, we do start the year uh, with both tutors and internal coaches um, going through training uh, with what's called Reading Core Institute. And so you can see on the screen there the breakdown of the different modules that that entails. We are utilizing an online learning management system to do the training this year. So uh, it's completely online, asynchronous to be completed, you know, at individual's own pace uh, in terms of the time, you know, we still anticipate it taking like that two to three days um, of time to complete at the beginning of the year. And so then once that training is completed, then look at having those tutors get started in September. And then we have some additional uh, trainings space throughout the rest of that fall semester. Um, our fundamentals one through four um, that go into some, some further detail. So um, the training is also available 
consistently so they can go back and reference anything um, that they would have taken in August um, in, in more detail if they have questions uh, as they get into it. In addition to the online component, we do have in-person practice days so that the tutors have a chance to practice those interventions um, with other individuals and answer, get their questions answered from our master coaches and everything before they get started at the school. Um, otherwise, we have um, newsletters that go out and online debriefs over Zoom, um, in addition to those coaches providing that ongoing support. Uh, so the LMS has really been a big um, convenience factor uh, as our as our training used to be all in person in August in, in Fargo. So that has made um, yeah, just added a lot of convenience for a, a lot of our rural communities. Yes, and internal coaches are also el eligible for the CSU continuing education credits for taking uh, the, the reading core training. So we offer um, for our new coaches one credit option since they have um, a, more content to do. And then our returning coaches always do a refresher each year and they receive um, one credit. Um, that they're eligible to get for that training. Um, in terms of the interventions, as we mentioned, everything is scripted and all of the materials are provided by the program. Um, tutors may need to make copies of things. They may need access to some passages for our connected text interventions. Um, but you can see on this slide, um, focusing on everything from phoneme blending and segmenting, letter sound correspondence blending words, um, into our connected text interventions of duet reading, repeated reading with comprehension, and um, word construction, which um, uses some other strategies, including using letter tiles to build words, write and read words, and build fluency um, within that, that intervention as well. And so each intervention also has a video that tutors have access to um, through our, our data system. And along with it is an intervention um, fidelity checklist. This is what each of the coaches would use monthly um, to ensure that a, a tutor is uh, following the sequence correctly. They're following the standard error protocol um, correction. And if not, then they do some, some training and teaching to ensure that we are implementing the interventions with fidelity. This is just a list of um, what our initial expectations are for next year. Um, we may have some updates sort of in this list, but the schools that have um, intend to, to work with us going forward. Um, if your school is interested in hosting the K-3 Reading Corps program, this is just a reminder of those commitments. Um, that internal coach time is probably the biggest piece. So who would be a good fit on your staff and ensuring that they have the time in their schedule that they would be able to support the program. We hope over time that by intervening with these students when they're in tier two, we're actually gonna create some capacity. Um, so you'll have less students in tier three, um, but it is a time commitment um, and you wanna be thoughtful about who that person would be and how that would work. Um, our tutor needs a space to work out of. It can be a shared space. We just wanna ensure that they have a somewhat quiet space that they can work out of, that they're not just stuck in the hallway. Um, so just thinking through that, what that looks like as we know a lot of buildings um, have some tight spaces. Same would be for uh, using a computer on site to enter their weekly student data. We don't want them to take that home due to confidentiality. They don't need their own computer. It could be a shared one in the computer lab, um, teacher's lounge, something that they can use on site. Um, we mentioned assistance in recruiting that tutor within your community, so really working with us. And then there is a cost match for, um, if you have a tutor who's there four hours a day, it is $3,700 for the entire year. Um, if you have a tutor there five and a half hours a day, it's $5,000 for the entire year. And that is, of course, if we place a tutor there, there's no cost if, um, if we're unable to recruit a tutor. Um, for this upcoming year, we are um, seeking some funding from the legislature. And if we receive it, we would have the opportunity to provide, uh, to waive that cost match for the first year for any new schools. So we'll have more information forthcoming on, on whether that's an option. Otherwise, for that um, annual cost match, you would be able to use um, any of the ESSER two, ESSER three, any title dollars to pay for that uh, cost match as well. 
So if you are interested in learning more, um, there's a couple of next steps. Um, first, we'd be happy to meet with you individually and talk through whatever questions you have. Um, we do have a host site application. Uh, we have a guide that really outlines all the things we've talked about um, in even further depth. Um, and so you can review that and find the link within uh, that guide to actually submit the whole site application. Um, talk to your staff, uh, see what questions they have, how it might fit into your current schedule, and think about who can fill the internal coach role. If you apply to be a host site, we will then follow up with you to see what questions you have um, and let you know if we uh, are able to award you a tutor for the upcoming school year. All right, well, thanks so much for watching our video today. Um, again, you can reach uh, me, Jillian Gardy, and Dana Sell at the Southeast Education Cooperative or reach out to Korea uh, for any questions that you might have about the Reading Corps um, program. Thanks.